Okay, the last uh, video in this whole unit is going to be about how people switched from being hunter-gatherers and became uh, part of civilizations. And the big thing that I want you to know is, of course, how that change happened and why it was so important, but then also what were the traits of both Neolithic villages and what were the traits of the civilizations that will eventually develop? And how are those connected to us? There's a great TED Ed lesson that you're going to have to do as part of this unit. All right, uh, good luck. Here's the video. Okay, so now today's lesson is really, really important because this is a big transition for, for humans and their ancestors. We're going to be talking about the Neolithic period. Now, Neo means new. Lithic means stone. Neolithic means the new stone age. This is huge because this is when the revolution happens. A change for people from being hunter-gatherers to food producers. We find a new way to get food, and it's by producing. Now keep this in mind. Most historians and scientists believe that women discovered agriculture, which makes sense because they were the ones doing the gathering. Now, the ability to understand that crops could be grown from seed was important. Also, the domestication of animal played a huge role as well because now we had a ready food source and dogs to hunt and protect it. You know, it's that old thing, it's okay to love your pets, just don't love your pets. But that was the reason dogs were probably picked first. Then other animals like sheep and cows followed suit. So what's the essential knowledge? The Neolithic Revolution is about two huge things, the development of agriculture and the domestication of animals. But other traits come with this. More advanced stone tools, uh, sharper blades, things to dig into the ground with. They developed weaving, which meant better cloth. Also, the development of pottery, which allowed people to store food. And all of this is important because it's going to lead to the start of civilization. Now, civilization happens at different times in different parts of the world. And again, it happens because of our environment. So, like, what crops grew well in certain places? That's part of it, too. As agricultural spreads, different crops became better suited for different environments. And the places became known as the cradles of civilization, where you could grow crops and start a village. Because a lot of people could do this. Now, the big civilizations are going to happen in river valleys. So why river valleys? Any ideas? Well, they have great soil and they have a water supply. The first was probably Mesopotamia between the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys. The other river valleys include the Nile and the Indus in India and the Huangpu in China. These villages spread throughout Europe and the rest of the world. The oldest and largest of the villages are found in Southwest Asia. Let's look at some. Jericho. Jericho was located on the Dead Sea in the area that we know as Palestine. It was in existence about 8,000 years ago. Katao Hayuk is found in modern-day Anatolia or Turkey. Its walls enclosed 32 acres and up to 6,000 people lived there. They had many different crops and developed artisans and trades, because remember, not everyone is needed to produce food when you have agriculture and domestication of animals. Cool. All right. Aleppo is one of the oldest uh, uh, inhabited cities in history. It was located in modern-day Syria, and it was somewhere around 5,000 BCE. It occupies a strategic trading point, and if you notice something really, really cool, it was built up on a hill thing that was so good about it is it was in an ideal location for trade too. The hill was for defensive reasons. Now, there were other monuments built around the world that also reflected some of the time uh, and the development of agriculture. One of those structures is Stonehenge. Now, at first, we're thinking, hey, you know, they just put a bunch of rocks in a circle. But the truth is, is that we now believe that this was an agricultural calendar as well as a religious one. And the cool thing about it is, is that it was completed, uh, it was started in the Neolithic Age, and it finished in the Bronze Age. It's located in Salisbury, England. And this is what it looked like probably upon its completion. The 
today, these are the ruins that we have left. Pretty impressive sight. Holy shnikes! A big question to ask yourself is, how did they move these blocks? These blocks probably came from some up to 10 miles away, and they weighed 25 to 30, even some as much as 50 and 60,000 tons. That's big weight. Archaeology has revealed the valleys of the Zagros Mountains in western Iran were crucial locations during the Neolithic Revolution. But why do anthropologists see this as such a momentous era in human history? The Neolithic Revolution was probably the most important breakthrough that humanity has ever made in terms of change of life because uh, it's basically the foundation stone upon which the historical civilizations are built. We're basically talking about the beginning of farming, the beginning of the domestication of animals, growing crops in the fields around a permanent village. Now, it wasn't long before these villages became towns and eventually these towns became cities because without farming, there would never have been a city on the face of the earth. We are the inheritors of that Neolithic revolution. So this really is our point of origin. Not surprising that. Now, the cool thing is about agriculture civilizations start to develop and a lot of good things happen. One of the bad things is is that the societies become very very male dominated and men were now seen as the primary providers of food because they did most of the work with the agriculture and because of this societies become patriarchal which means they're very male dominated. Now it's interesting because other things start to happen as well. Metals are going to develop. The first one to be used in a large amount of uh, tools and uh, even for armor is going to be copper. Now copper is not a particularly strong metal, but consider that it was one of the first ones used, so for that time it was. Later on, metals are going to be made into alloys where you mix metals to form a stronger metal. In this case, it's going to be bronze by mixing copper and tin. And then eventually, around 1000 BC, we're going to move into the Iron Age, which is even stronger than bronze. Now, what happens with civilization? What happens is you don't need as many people to produce food. So you have agricultural surplus. It's going to lead to the emergence of civilizations or a complex culture where humans share common elements. Culture is the way of life of a people. The things they do, the things they eat, the, their religion, their governments are all part of their culture. <coughs> so when we look at civilizations on this chart, we have the rise of cities, the growth of government, usually monarchs in the ancient times. That means kings or queens. Then the emergence of religion. Priests take a very active role. Most of the religions of the ancient times revolved around natural forces. Again, the environment played a huge role on these people. The sun was immensely important to them. It was important that it came up every day. Rain, wind, storms. Remember, they thought that the gods were making these things happen, not natural forces. New social structure. Instead of everybody being equal, like in a hunter-gatherer society, society changes. And you have a rich group and a poor group. You have a ruling class and a class that is ruled. And plus there's slavery pretty much from the existence of civilization. We also get a really important element that makes history happen. Remember, everything that happened before writing was prehistory. Now we develop writing, and we're allowed to, for the first time, create what we know as history. So, cuneiform is, or cuneiform, is the first writing developed in Sumer, which is located in Mesopotamia, between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Also, artistic activity, the building of temples, palaces, paintings, and sculptures all start to take off with the creation of civilization. Now, all of this is based on the idea, once again, of agricultural surplus. People start to develop skills like making fabric, pottery, jewelry. Those are artisans. They become good at trades. You also have the specialization of labor, which means that people become good at doing their jobs using technology, which are the skills and tools of society, and you start to have food being stored for longer periods of time, which is vital if you're going to have population growth. And then lastly, you start to have trade between the different cultures and villages. And it 
first, they're going to use something known as the barter system, where you just trade goods for goods. No money involved yet. Okay, so again, the civilizations start to form in the river valleys. The first is the Nile, the Tigris and Euphrates, the Indus River, and the Huang Hu. And I'm going to show you these. Here is Egypt and the Nile River. Then we move to Mesopotamia, which was probably the first of the ancient civilizations. It's between the Tigris and Euphrates River. Then in India, you have the Indo-Gangaic Plain, which is the Indus and Ganges Rivers. And then lastly, you're going to have the Huanghu River, also known as the Yellow River. No, it's not yellow because of that. We'll talk more about that in uh, the unit on China. Now here are some of the traits. Remember that civilizations had governments. Usually the strongest person was picked to protect you at the beginning. These will be the formations of monarchs. Religion. Religion is tied to natural powers. The idea that you could um, have some type of effect on nature by praying to your god to keep bad things from happening. There are a lot of symbols too. Social structure is very, very important. And like I said, different classes will form. And many, many uh, societies will have slaves pretty much from the beginning, usually prisoners of war. Here's an example of a class system in Egypt with the pharaoh at the top all the way down to unskilled laborers and slaves not even on the chart yet. Writing will develop. The first written language was in Sumer, cuneiform, which means wedge-shaped writing. We'll talk more about it in the next unit. This is what cuneiform looks like. Lots of dashes and, and uh, triangles. And then art. People will start to do more and more artistic things. Jewelry, pottery, sculptures, and then eventually really big buildings and pyramids. Okay, so using the chart on the characteristics of civilization that you are going to be given, come up with some examples comparing the traits of our civilizations today to the traits of ancient people. This is the chart. Boom. 